I got a broken one. <laughs> I think you're the broken one. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> there we go. That's better. All right. Oh, we got some champagne, too. I don't know how the fuck this works. Don't point it at me. I think you broke it already. No way, man. Really? Don't point it at me. Oh, you twist it. Whoa! Oh, right! Not in my shit. not in my water. Hey gang. That's uh that's how we celebrate here at the uh for the audio listener, that was a big um sh- champagne bottle that uh that that uh popped. Popped uh, confetti up. Yeah. And for the audio listener, we are in our finest tuxedos. Um, I wish you could see it. We I wish look, you could see our tuxes. We look so good in these tuxedos. I mean, uh, y- y- you've seen Chris Pine at the, if you're anywhere on the internet and for some reason you give a shit about this thing that everybody's talking about, um, Chris Pine, boy, he, he's, it's giving Chris Pine. It's giving Chris Pine. Yeah. Uh, guys, you, yeah, we also have that. a real bottle of champagne. Yeah. It's and, uh, it is a thirty dollar bottle of champagne. It's a seventy dollar bottle. Seriously? Mm-hmm. Damn, dude. Hell yeah. And for those of you who don't know, it's nine in the morning, eight forty in the morning for us. Um, um, oh, oh, here, buddy, you gotta top me off here. So we are, we are definitely. Should we drink this? We should drink the whole bottle, right? If you want, I to. need more than that, Babu. Yo, if you yell at me like that again, Zach, Ashley, are you getting some of this? Um, no, sir. I am on the job. Oh, you're on the job. Oh my God, I'm and on the Ashley job too. Is but not of age. Sir. No. <laughs> A- oh, Ashley's not 21. <laughs> well, do we have any apple cider? <laughs> All right, we'll finish the rest later. All right, hey, bud, and to you out there at home. Thanks for making this possible. 50, baby. Here's to way more than 50 more. Yeah, here's to at least two more. <laughs> Shares were just getting hammered this morning. Every day they're pounding it. Bitcoin. I'm not fucking leaving. <laughs> mm. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah, nothing like I got my liquid death here, I got my champagne, and I've got my iced coffee. Uh, so, Emil, you want to explain to the folks um what how happened? we got these sweet tuxedos? Yeah, you got I'll these tell you what uh, happened. great platform shoes. Also, they're very these uh, aren't platform. These are this is a yeah. They scared the hell out of me. You're not meant to be that tall. Yeah. So here's what happened. What happened? I said we should do you know a gala for the fiftieth episode. I think it's right? pronounced gala. I don't think so. I think it is, dude. It's gala. Pretty sure it's Gala. Are you fucking with me? I'm not fucking with you. Gala? Yeah. If, if, I, I'm pretty sure it is pronounced. Is it pron- how to pronounce? Pronounce. Hey, Siri, how do you pronounce Gala? Oh, oh, oh. Here's what I found. Wait, wait. Here, I've got, the, uh, I've got the pronunciation thing right here. Gala. Oh, fuck. It's Gala. <laughs> it's ga- We're both wrong. It's not Gala or Gala. Anyway, I gala. said we should do a Gala. Okay. We'll wear tuxes. It'll be fun, huh? Yeah. You said, how are you going to get tuxes that quickly, huh? Yeah, and I and you said, trust me. <laughs> and I said, okay, dude, and you then, got it. I'm going to do my thing, and you get us tuxes. Here are my measurements. And then I got right on it by going to Colorado mm-hmm. and doing a climbing trip. Yeah, that was great. That was a really, yeah. Uh-huh. And it turns out you can't really get a tux in like 12 hours. Yeah, no kidding, man. <laughs> who would have thought that leaving it to the last minute isn't a good idea? And then I said, who cares? We'll just scrap the gala thing, right? But then what happened... People really emailed in all their uh, their gala wear, their their black tie, their formal wear. Yeah. So I said we can't leave people hanging, and I said, don't worry, I'll get us, I'll get us some formal wear. Yeah. And formal wear is certainly a way to describe what we got. So I don't care. I like it. I think you look great. Thank you. I. I it's a little. Whoa. It's a my. <laughs> My microphone spring is really... Uh, it's giving erection. It's giving erection. And speaking of erection, man, this thing is... It is... I'm busting out of this thing. I, I must be a 32A. 
You look great. Thank you. You look good too. I really I like mine. A you lot. do. You you look like a you look like um, you know what you look like. What's you that? look like uh, the PE teacher at at the middle school. It's the middle school dance, and you are the PE teacher who is chaperoning, and you took it a little bit too seriously. You're like you're like you know what? I'm gonna dress up for this, and um, yeah, man, that just took me back. To that did take middle me back. school dances. Oh my god, Cotton Eye Joe playing. Yeah, and so you got these shoes too that you decided to spring for, and um, they look like they don't fit quite well. <clears throat> well, you know what I figured? I like putting my leg up. You know, I like putting my leg up. And yeah. what does everyone do when they see a bare foot? They freak out. So I whoa, fi- those dogs! Right for free. So I said, why don't I cover up the feet? Yeah. Somebody call animal control because this guy's got his dogs out. Yeah. Anyway, so. Uh, should we show some of the the pictures of the? Uh... Yeah, first let me give a quick shout to Glenn, our boy Glenn, birthday boy Glenn, and tell everybody to still check that disclaimer in the description box by clicking see more. And anyway, here we go with the formal. Here we go. Look at this. We we'll we'll have a nice little tr- audio track with this. Dun, 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 dun. Look at we this can't guy! Use that one wow, because of, uh, of uh, copyright stuff. These people yeah. said they were in Greece. We love it. All right, yeah. Look at that, celebrating happy fiftieth. Wow, that's so beautiful. Thank you. Happy you look 50th. so great. Wow, look at this oh, guy. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's got a little nice glass of piss he's drinking there. Ooh, look at this. We love this. We got another one a, from Greece. A Greek uh, greetings from Greece. Yeah, and then he. Uh, I don't know what that is. It looks it like says, gibberish. It says brothers. It says Adefia. Yeah, I can't read that though. That's in gibberish to me. That's just the Greek. That's just a foreign language. Yeah. And this gentleman doing his uh, Greek. He says greetings from Greece. It's Greek. Yeah, I, I don't know about that, okay. but okay. <laughs> this uh, this guy's showing his. He's doing the Ben pose. He's showing his bare feet. He's doing the dogs out on a hike, baby. We love it. You know that guy? We got a baby Russell Crowe here. <laughs> okay. Prepubescent Russell Crowe. This guy. We got uh, uh, Salt Bay here. Oh, that is Salt Bay. Wow, and Salt Bay went to. I didn't to know a, he was a fan of the show. No, boy, look at the the camera angle makes those feet look huge. Oh, is that Joe Biden? Yeah, whoa, Joe Byron here. Wow, look at this. You bam, look great. Bam, bam, whoever you are. Bam, bam, bam. Oh, a oh! child. A stock image of a child. <laughs> no, like. I think that's a, ch- a child. Picture. Yeah, but look how low quality that image is. It was probably the nineties. Oh, look at that. He, he got himself on the logo. Congrats on 50 episodes. For the audio listener, we are going through photos. You can just fast forward this if you want, but if not, uh, oh, yeah. endure us. Yeah, um, uh, this is uh, we're, we're looking at people who submitted their images. Man, what were these guys, like seven feet tall? Look at these guys. Jesus H. This gentleman looks hot, looking hot from back in April. He sends us a photo. That still counts. All right, we got this guy with the round glasses. He's on a jet ski or something. I wish that we had the geo guesser guy here to guess where he is. He'd probably be, he'd I'm probably say be that's spot uh, on. The Hudson River up uh, up near. I'm going to say Newport Beach. Uh, we got a ca- Canada boy. Look at this guy with his shorts. All right. Yeah. Oh, oh yes. yes. Chugging the chugging the, with an injured wrist. To a champagne loving queen. Oh, yes, queen. Yes, queen with the nice drape on that elegant dress. Sipping champagne. These, this co- lovely couple under a, on a bridge. It looks like the Beetlejuice Bridge where they, they under a bridge. Under a bridge. No, yeah, I guess. Oh, you're you know right. what? That's like one of those bridges you see in Vermont. Yeah, yeah, Vermont. Okay. Oh, whoa! It's a sexual photo, Someone folks. Under- I wish you could see Someone it. Someone understood the assignment. Yeah, it's giving what else sexual. Do we got? How many more we got? Yeah. Oh, okay. what's a little, little cutie action? dog? And a little cutie cat. Look at that. Hell yeah. Yeah, my boy in the bathtub. Getting faded off on the Welsh. Welsh. Oh, we got the lady drinking the pink champagne, it looks like. And hey, there, hey, he there he is. Chris Payne. Chris Payne. Yeah, very elegant with the big. Uh, oh, my boy looks like me. The t-shirt tucked into the. He does look like you. Did I have sex with a redheaded woman and give birth to this boy? Maybe it was that girl who catfished you. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Great looking gams on that guy. Uh, and we got this lady here looking looking good. Me at my wedding. Me at the Trillionaire Fifty Mindset yes. Gallery. That's the, gallery that's the, gala. That's what, oh, okay, a very stylish man. Very right? sassy, my man. And yeah, Pretty looking hot. good with the tie. And that's let's stop there. I feel like that's enough. <laughs> You're in luck because that was it. Oh, oh cool. Great. Wow, folks. So that's it for the. Uh, I'll tell you what. Champagne hits a little different at eight forty-five. Yeah, right? I'm liking it, man. I'm getting. Hey, you know, I, as someone who has flown first class early in the morning. 
it does truly hit different. I had like three great. sips and I was like, am I drunk? Oh man, I'm already getting there. Mm. We do have a loaded episode for you today. So for those of you who like to bitch and moan that we don't do enough finance. Yeah, what are we at here? We got a ton here today, but. There was one thing we wanted to show real fast. We had a fan infographic. Oh, we this is good for the 50th episode. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, someone s- someone ran a, an algorithm here, and they've got our most uh, most used words on every episode. Yeah. Based on censored, auto-generated YouTube transcripts, the most unique words per episode. His sort name of is Ben Kate. Ben Kate. Yeah, shout Thank out you to for ben putting Kate. in the hard work. Thank you, dude. Let's see. Can we scroll down here? Let's see what some of these words so, are. Uh, What's, what was the one on our first episode? What was the most unique penny, word on our first episode? Penny. 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 Penny stocks. Vaccine. Penny. That was a, a, a foreboding one. What we yeah. would get paid for these episodes. Crab was used 17 times in, in episode Why? Two, Why did we weird. say crab so many times? I don't times? know. 36 times I said the, we said the word pudding. In oh, that was that one makes sense though. You were doing the pudding. Oh performance. yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is right. Uh, pudding again and credit. In we've six. got for the the credit one. That one makes sense. But then we've got ones like uh, diarrhea for episode. <laughs> um, <laughs> diarrhea funny. <laughs> yeah, I think right there we've got. Which one was that? Buying a Bitcoin. Episode 39. Episode 39. 39. That, Diarrhea. I imagine something was going on with Ben's stomach for yeah, that one. Yeah, probably. My tummy's been upsetting me. Ghost in episode 46. That's yeah, that one surprising. makes sense. Spooky following close behind on Holy that one. shit. Episode 47. Bitcoin was mentioned 156 times. I wonder why. I wonder why and who is to blame for that. And then uh, the most recent one, the Coke. Coke was mentioned uh, 21 times. <laughs> and then Coke, Diet, Diet Coke, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Populist Volker Trilogy. This is fun. Oh, okay. Thank, thank you. you for your hard thank work. you, Ben Cates. Keep, keep making these. See what kind of weird shit we say. Oh, new sponsor alert. We want to take a quick break to thank a sponsor of today's episode, True Classic Tees. Finding the perfect fitting t-shirt can get frustrating. The thing is either way too tight around your gut or just big and boxy. True Classic wants to make it easy to look good and feel good. So, their high quality and pocket friendly menswear is made with every man in mind. It's the True Classic way. So guys, no excuses. It's time to upgrade. In fact, over 2 million men already have, and they look really good. So, we have an exclusive deal for our listeners. We want to hook you up with some True Classic. For a limited time only, get 25% off with the code TRILL at trueclassic.com. Almost all men's t-shirts are designed to look good on a certain body type. Think skinny models with six packs. But most of us aren't packing anything but a few beers. Am I right, fellas? And there's nothing wrong with that. Guys, it's simple. You are wearing the wrong clothes. True Classics tees taper off towards the bottom, but they fit tighter around the chest and shoulders. You can wear a True Classic with confidence. These are tailor-made to highlight your best assets. You know, I have about 30 t-shirts, and uh, the reason being, it's hard to find a good one. It's one of the hardest. I'm constantly in search of the perfect t-shirt, and I think we may have found it. It really is. And seriously, so they sent us a couple, and first of all, they're extremely soft. I already washed them. They are really so, so. soft. I want to put them on my pillows instead of pillowcases. You know what I mean? I know what you mean. And I tried them on, and they fit. They just look like one of those classic t-shirts, like from the 50s and right. the 60s. So you'd think that they're really expensive, but not these, man. And they fit my body so well. Uh, our executive producer's uh, wife bought him a few of these, and now he wears them all the time. He loves them. These t-shirts, man, I'm telling you. Not only are you getting a t-shirt designed for the male body, but the first thing you'll notice out the box is how soft it is. Get ready to make a thrift shop run, because you won't be able to go back to cheap materials once you try these. And for any of the big boys out there, they have long body options for the tall guys and up to XXXL on the staple colors. Skinny dudes, big dudes, buff dudes, my dudes dudes. True Classic has you covered. Wow, Emil really got that out. It's time to get comfortable and get going. Upgrade your wardrobe with True Classic. Get 25% off at trueclassic.com with code TRILL. Free shipping included on purchases over 100 bucks. 100% risk-free guarantee with a 30-day return policy. Stay classy with True Classic. 
Yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, God. Every time I put the mic down, it, like, sn- snaps back up, and it it's whipping me in the face. I thought that was, like, a cool rap line. Every time I put the mic Every down. Every time I put the mic down, snaps back up. Every time I put the mic down, jack up. And the minute fun, none of the gun. And the man, the man, the man, the man, the man. Man, I'm just like Eminem. Uh-huh. Do I look good right now? Yes. Yeah? I feel... Do you wish I got the tuxes? No, I like this. Um... I will say, I just, I, I, I feel very vulnerable. It feels very physically vulnerable to be, um, to be dressed like this. So I don't understand. And when I was, when I was taking a See, leak, I feel liberated. I feel free. I like this. Yeah. I mean, I do at the same time, but when I was peeing, I had to lift this thing up and I almost went au jus style. And, au jus style? Yeah. And d- the dress dipped almost. Dipped your penis in the. No, the, the, the dress itself almost So the dress dipped. was the French dip, not your penis. Yes. And almost dipped it into the toilet. That would have been humiliating. Do you have underwear on? Uh, yeah. Why do you? Oh, he doesn't have on underwear, folks. He just showed me his penis, and there it is in all of its glory. Little little fireman with the helmet on. <laughs> so <laughs> let's get let's get right from from there. Let's transition into the markets, huh? Skip to thirteen minutes and sixteen seconds if you want to see the, the finance. Yeah, stuff. Yeah, you want to see the finance stuff? You fucking loser. <laughs> you're not. You're, you're not a loser. I'm just kidding. I love you, whoever you are Let out the there. Let the boys have a little fun. It's yeah. Good, good the episodes. Oh, right. I wanted to do Let's Go Girls. Da, 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 da. We can do that for the bonus episode. Great. We can kick it out with a little Shania. Oh, the yeah, best thing about stuff. being a woman. Okay, so. Markets, Tell me what's going on in the market, baby. It's been an absolute. You know, the S&P crazy. has dropped about uh, 400 points since it um, spiked back up. It hit its 200-day moving average, uh, which is like the long-term I, I've mentioned in the very early episodes that there are the two basic moving averages that people watch are the 200 day and the 50 day. Why and how that came to be, I couldn't tell you. That's just what people follow. And there is an old adage in Wall Street that nothing fun happens below the 200 day moving average. And volatility, I think like that's nothing it. Nothing good ever happens after 2 a.m., right? Something like that, sure. And what does that mean? Why? Because that's below, it means price action is below um, the 200 day, av- the previous the average of the previous 200 days. That means that the longer term trend is up or down? I was, I honestly, it's down. I was thinking about the champagne. Oh, yeah. I, I'm feeling a little buzzed as well. So we'll get through this. But so. <laughs> The the it, it it came right back up, butted its head right at the two hundred day moving average, and just got rejected like a fucking nerd asking out the prom queen, just hardcore rejected. Is that was that good? Was yeah, that yeah, good? no, I liked it. Yeah, okay. So it's tough out there, and so we've got a bad combination. There's this confluence of events. Remember, I mentioned that September 11th. is is the. Let me finish. Okay. <laughs> September. <laughs> September. It's coming up, isn't it? Yeah. It's going to be old enough to drink, baby. Yeah. September 11th is going to be old enough to fight for our country. Well, it already is. It already is. Um, so I mentioned that September is, seasonally speaking, the worst performing month. Always. Every year. Pretty much, yeah. And I On think the, the, average. the average that it drops over the uh, uh, over the last fifty years or since nineteen fifty, I believe, on average, it's down either half a percent or one and a half percent. So this is kind of normal. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you've got a bad combination of September seasonality. Uh, stop- Do you know why that is? You know, I don't. We talked about it a little bit. We made a, jo- a stupid joke that it was because of the song. It's obviously not. What song? Do you remember the twenty, the Earth, Wind, and Fire song? Yeah, it has nothing to do with that. <laughs> yeah, but we made a dumb joke that it did. Um, well, they're they're also used to. There's a lot of old Wall Street um, sayings. There's one that was sell in May and go away, and just like don't you know don't trade the summer doldrums because you know people are on vacation. There's less liquidity, but I don't think that that applies anymore in the days right. now of high frequency trading and. Um, f- high speed internet connection because yeah, man, fucking boomers and the silent generation they love uh, they love sayings sayings that like rhyme yeah yeah sell and made and go away yeah ta 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 fuck you shoe shine boy what'd you fucking say to me 
<laughs> Imagine that you you just like in the fifties. People are talking like that. Yeah, I just lost a ton of money. It's the middle of June. Well, you know what they say: <laughs> sell in May and go away. I'm by the collar. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Monopoly man. <laughs> How dare you? Yeah. Uh, so then, um, not only that, but stock buyback. Um, there's a buyback blackout period before the next quarter that we're currently in, and you know companies are always buying back. There's not always, but if they've authorized it. They're buying back stock, but not right now because it's a blackout period. So not only those two things, but then you also have the the profit reckoning, quote unquote, from uh, the second quarter getting kicked down the road to this next quarter because, you know, everybody was anticipating the, the negative profits to be finally showing up. But it didn't really happen last quarter. It wasn't as bad as everybody right. thought. So <clears throat> maybe it's getting kicked down, the can's getting kicked down to the next quarter. That's been so, the fucking story, man. I know. So there's a lot of narratives out They're there. They're telling us about all this pain, but we're not seeing it yet. Yeah. Well, but we kind of have, right? Yeah. Because like, we dropped and then we bounced from June. We hit the 200 day. And since then, the SPY has dropped like 40 points. It was at like 430 or the S&P was at 4300 and then dropped back down uh, in short order to 390, 3900. Interestingly, though, the VIX hasn't really spiked that much. Yeah, we're at uh, what? What are we at right now today? If you do the one day, oh yeah. So today we're finally getting today, which getting is a little bounce. Two days ago for you, the listener and the viewer, we're finally getting a little bit of a bounce. Um, and so I wanted to continue. There, so if you are, if you're new to this stuff, you know, there's no shame in sitting it out. If you're an active trader. If you're an active trader like me, this is kind of the fun stuff because we're. I think this is going to be our fourth red week if we continue on this trend. How and are you doing personally? Terrible. Yeah, because you were doing I've terrible last back, week. I have given back so much profit. I actually texted Glenn and I was like, "Dude, I'm, I'm, I'm. What am I doing?" And he said, "No, nah, if you want to talk, give me a call." And I, I didn't give him a call because I've just been in such a sour mood about it. Um. How how bad are we talking here? I gave back almost a hundred percent of my profits. Oh yeah, dab it up, dude. Yeah, which happened a couple months ago too. I was up huge, and then within the last two weeks of the month, I gave it all back. Same story here in August or last, this last month in August. But you know, um, but if I were a non betting man. And if I were just a casual investor, so you're like you say, oh, it's not gambling, but then you call yourself a betting man. Well, <laughs> yeah, because yeah, sure, what? <laughs> fine. But if I were so like, this and you're is, like, look, it's not because I know what I'm doing, and what I'm doing is, is losing all my money. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Um, I mean, look, if I weren't me, if 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 I were me, but not me, and and um, just doing my thing, I yeah. wouldn't be worried at all about the market dropping. I'd be excited to put my money to work and just continue doing the thing of socking away a okay, little but bit. It, so in this in this scenario, you're not you, but still a trader? I'm not a trader, and I'm just Joe every person, Joe average listener. Who's, and you're excited to put your money in. Yeah, as you should be. Just continue doing it, man. That's the that's the winning strategy that has proven itself over time. Oh man, there was that big. We never talked about it. That big New York Times article that was like, "You want to succeed in the market? Do nothing." Oh yeah, those come out like every yeah, yeah. few months. It, it's almost like they're bored and they're thinking, "Okay, what 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 kind of article am I going to write here? Let's do another one about how over over time the best thing to do because picking stocks is fucking hard." Even if you think you got a right, winner. and fewer and fewer uh, traders and money managers and stuff beat the market. So. Yeah, I mean, you just had that Melvin Capital go under. The, I think Tiger Global or some some fucking I don't know hedge funds. They they're they're not doing great. No, because uh, shit is hard. And neither are you. Neither am I. I mean, overall, I'm doing okay, but yeah. So <laughs> I I want I'll get back to the DWAC thing, but. Spy is looking like it might be bear flagging. You know what a bear flag is? I was going to say something inappropriate, so you go. <laughs> so it's a, a bear flag is a, yeah, here we go. We pulled it up. It's a bearish chart pattern that's formed by two declines separated by a brief consolidation retracing retracement period. So basically, um, 
it's the opposite of a bull flag, which is when uh, stock shoots up and then kind of goes sideways before continuing higher. Same thing, uh, but the opposite, the inverse. It's a down and then a little sideways slash up, and then it continues downward. Hey, gang, we want to take a quick break to thank a sponsor of today's show, public.com. Public is an investing app where you can invest in stocks, ETFs, and crypto with any amount of money. What I love about Public is that it helps people become better investors. You can follow other investors and share ideas. People like Graham Stephan, Cody Ko, Shelby Church, and thousands more are on the app. I joined Public, folks, and you can see what trends I follow if you search for Ben Khan in the app. On public, you can buy slices of stocks, ETFs, and crypto versus full shares. Alongside thousands of stocks and ETFs, public offers 11 crypto assets, including Bitcoin, Cardano, Ethereum, Doge, and Shiba Inu. Plus, public puts investors first and doesn't sell your trades to market makers like other investment apps. They route the trades directly to the exchanges. You'll get a free stock worth up from $3 to $70 when you go to public.com slash trill and create an account. So get started today. Once again, make sure you go to public.com slash trill to get a free stock. Click the link in the description. So here's the thing. It's also, the SPY is also right up against a trend line that can be drawn for the audio listeners. See, this is why we don't do charts anymore because it's Wait, really... hold on. Can you keep that? Your arms look really good when you do that. Are you serious, dude? Fucking... Don't fucking mock me. No, dating profile picture. Yeah? <sighs> no, no, no. The other one was good. This way? Yeah, I want to see those tries. Uh, trend line? Do you see the really good trend line going up this way? That's good. Oh, Kill thanks, it. dude. Dating profile picture. So um, fr- up against the... there, There's a trend line that you can draw from the mid-June low up... To the, you know, then we put in a higher low and just about another higher low, and that's right where we're butting up against. Interestingly, the Nasdaq, the triple Q, has already broken its trend line, but so yeah, in that now it's trend, trending downward. It's it's below that, yeah, yeah, yeah. It broke below. But that can be a little fake out. So I'm like, I'm really hesitant to short anything here. Because you think it's going to shoot back up? Well, because it just feels too crowded and too easy. <clears throat> yeah. You know, because it's like everybody sees the same thing. And I hate to, I know being a contrarian is like a stupid, it can be a stupid thing. Well, I'm bullish because everybody is fucking bearish. Well, we should just see what Jim Cramer saying and go with the opposite of that. <sighs> there is that inverse Cramer yeah. ETF that's out there. That um, just crushes it? I don't know how it's doing. I, I wonder. But so... But it is looking more and more like we've just been in like a reflexive kind of bear market rally from June and now, you know, we're coming down. But I saw these interesting things from Bank of America, right? So tell me several things. Seven out of the last seven bear markets. So 100% of the last seven bear markets. Wow. Did you do the math on that? The no, hum- this the is the research that they... No, I know, but you took seven out of seven, then you said 100%. Yeah, oh, I did the math. Yeah, quick maths. Freaking human calculator. Quick maths. They ended after a Fed rate cut. Which we are not going to see for a while. Which we are not going to see for a while. And they are forecasting, the first rate cut is forecast for uh, uh, Q3 of next year. So that's quite a while. And also they noted that um, they coincided co- co- coin some, something uh, with that, is that uh, the two-year treasury bonds... The two-year and the 10-year? No, the two-year... Um, um, Yield drops by 50 basis points uh, also, and the two years yield is going up because people are wanting the short-term uh, yields instead of the long-term, the longer-term ones, because that, that shows that they don't believe more in the in the longer term. Sorry, dude, I'm talking so much already. No, no, I love it. So that's something to consider. It's like, okay, is the bear market over? Well, not over, but like how much longer do we have? Well, according to the Bank of America, it might be a while. But a bear market can go sideways. It can rally a bit. Uh, and then I saw this interesting thing. I never really pay attention to the like the PE, the price to earnings ratio. But Why? Because I, I just, I don't know, it feels antiquated. And it just feels... It feels uh, like some motherfucker saying, buy in May and then say you later, pal. Yeah, yeah. It feels like one of those... He would, he would look at... Monocle <laughs> motherfuckers. I earnings. never bought a stock whose PE is more than, you know, 20. Because you've got shit like Amazon sporting like a PE of 300. If it's if it's May and you're buying stock, you be prepared for the cock. Yeah. Because you, <laughs> you're about to get fucked. 
So Bank of America says that their their rule is they add the CPI plus the trailing price to earnings ratio for the S&P and that combined should be less than 20 ahead of a market bottom and it's currently at 27 cuz they got the PE of uh, 18.4 plus the CPI of 8.5 and, and that gives you 27. So according to them, you know, it's a little too early and it's better to be late than early. Um, and also you had un- another big thing. We had unemployment rise in August, just a little bit, which happens before a market bottom, but the average lag time, this is the key part. The average lag time between the initial rise in unemployment and the market bottom is 13 months. So if, if all of this is, uh, true, according to bank of America, both of beef, both of these it's still a while for the market to bottom because you got the... But all signs, it looks like all signs are still pointing to more pain. We're just not necessarily there yet. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. If you're like probably a lot of our viewers and listeners, you're a younger person, this is that once in 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 a decade kind of opportunity that could present itself if you got cash ready to deploy. Just, you know... I, you know, I said better to be late than early, but uh, if you're still contributing each month and, and putting shit in, <clears throat> you, you know, not financial advice, but that's what I would be, that's what I would be doing if it were me. If it wasn't you. If it wasn't if me it was, now. If it was you, but a different you. Dog, I'm going to need some more champagne. All right. He's going to be pouring me some champagne here, folks. So, uh, Glug, glug, glug. Be careful with that stuff, man. It is uh Potent. It's the Veuve Clicquot. Oh, oh, it's foaming. All the way up there? Mm. Man, champagne really does fucking slap. I'm worried. I think after hours is going to be a little weird. Why? Because <laughs> we're going to be, be a done little... with this. Yeah, but who cares? I'm not wearing any underwear under this thing. Yeah, but it'll be fine. All right. Man, I was going to go to the gym today, too. See if I can do a so pull-up. I. I was going to do a pull-up with 45 pounds this time hanging between my waist. I'd like to see that. Because I do it with 25 pounds, and I can do five five pull-ups with 25 pounds. I figure I can do one with 45. Sure. Right? What's another 20 pounds? So all of that's to say, all signs are pointing to, hey, there's probably a little bit more pain ahead. And the VIX not really reacting so far says two different things to me. Yeah, why do you think that is? I don't know. Okay. But it's probably some kind of technical underlying, um, I, I, I don't know the word I'm looking for, but the, you know, market structure kind of shit that's, God damn it. <laughs> Mike, the mic keeps on kissing me. Um, but the VIX being low at first blush is like, oh, it's because there's no panic. That's why, you know, these downward moves aren't necessarily anything for me to worry about. But then the flip side of that is, oh, there actually isn't much panic out there yet. And there remains, there's room to the upside for the VIX and therefore room to the downside with the market. What are you doing? What the fuck? What are you popping a balloon out of nowhere for? Are you okay? Did you just have rage that you needed to get out? Just keep going. What was that? No, we need to talk. What was this? What was that about? Did the balloon look at you funny? No, there was too many and it was blocking my view. Oh, it was blocking your view? Okay. Jesus Christ. <laughs> this guy just like was looking at me and then just leans over. <laughs> he had to hulk out on one of these I was, effing balloons. I was hoping it would be as uh, I was it was I was hoping it was gonna be as distract as little as <laughs> what? The least amount of distracting as possible. Yeah. Oh, who would have thought that popping a balloon <laughs> Would even be possible. I didn't want to be. interrupt you. I just wanted to clear out a little space. So oh I can man, see I got a story about balloons, and uh, I'm not going to tell it right now because it is, it might be more one of the more embarrassing ones that I. There are, believe it or not, stories that I feel like I. You wouldn't even tell. tell it on after hours. No, maybe not. It, it, I, I would save it for eight ball, maybe. So if you can remember, the maybe balloons. Yeah, the one that more people will, will see. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, um, but it's one that my mom is less likely to view and listen to. Even though, I mean, at this point, who cares? All right. right? Uh, anyway, I'll be dead in a hundred years. Hey Siri, now. remind me about the eight ball, uh, the balloon story. I mean, you're naked in like episode what ten? <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yes, Zach, thank you for the reminder that I was naked. I Siri heard uh, the apple or the blue story, so hopefully I can remember. Yeah, apple. yeah, the apple or the blue story. So, all right, so a couple other things. Story. Give me the Dwack, baby. Dwack. You know I'm fucking, I'm dying for the Dwack over here. Dying for the Dwack. The Dwack, D-W-A-C was Trump's SPAC thing. Yep. He was supposed to for merge. Truth, for truth, truth social. social. And um, some, I, I guess the sh- they didn't get enough shareholder support for a one-year extension to complete the deal. So it was down. Which is bullshit. They're, they're, uh, they're bearish on my boy Donnie. I don't know the details of it. These SPAC things just, I mean, they stink to high heaven. I, I, you could probably uh, count on one hand, if not, or two hands, if not one, the amount of SPACs that have gone on to actually be successful. Um, oh, yeah. What's the king? Chamath? Chamath Palihapitiya. He's got like an insane Dude. failure rate. <laughs> The <laughs> this guy, I mean, in 2020, he was seriously touting himself as the next Warren Buffett. He was saying that like, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring these companies public, and they're only companies that I believe in. And he he presented himself as a, as an expert, which you know I guess you could say he is. I would I would say instead that he's not an expert. He's just someone who got kind of lucky. Making a billion dollars being an That's how uh, all these fucking guys are. Yeah. Being an early investor or not investor, early employee with fat stock grants and Facebook. They got a little fucking lucky. Yeah. And then they're like fucking they think of themselves as like Nostradamus. Yeah. Hey guys, we want to take a quick break to thank another sponsor of today's episode, Shopify. Ooh, it's the Ooh, sound of another, another sale, sale on Shopify, the all in one commerce platform to start, run and grow your business. Shopify is a platform designed for anyone to sell anywhere, giving entrepreneurs like myself the resources once reserved for big business. Customized for my needs with a great looking online store that brings my idea to life and tools to manage my day to day and drive sales. Making your idea real opens endless possibilities. It's a journey, but that's the beauty of entrepreneurship. I love how Shopify makes it easy for anyone to successfully run their own business. Shopify powers millions of entrepreneurs just like me from first sale to full scale. And every 28 seconds, a small business owner makes their first sale on Shopify. Get started by building and customizing your online store with no coding or design experience. Access powerful tools to help you find customers, drive sales, and manage your day-to-day. Gain knowledge and confidence with extensive resources to help you succeed. Plus, with 24-7 support, you're never alone. More than a store, Shopify grows with you. This is Possibility, powered by Shopify. Go to shopify.com slash trill, all lowercase, for a free 14-day trial and get full access to Shopify's entire suite of features. Start selling on Shopify today. Go to shopify.com slash trill right now. Shopify.com slash trill. Who's Nostradamus for this? Some people might not know. <laughs> that, like, philosopher that people said was going to... I don't know what he is. That ancient dude who said, who like made all these predictions that people yeah. said came right. I remember right after nine eleven, before before you had Twitter, before you had Nostradamus Facebook, called nine eleven. Well, that's one of the back back in the day. Sure, the only as you as I'm sure you remember, but for our, our Gen Z shit. listeners, the way that internet rumors spread was purely via email. You would get, cha- you remember chain emails? Yeah. Yeah. And I remember getting some from- That like, was early TikTok. It, it was kind of early TikTok, but you would get like HTML heavy email chains. I personally would get them from my grandma's boyfriend, Bill, <laughs> who was like 88. I feel like every grandma has a boyfriend, Bill. What? <laughs> I know so many people whose grandparents are dating a Bill. Oh, Maybe man. it's all the same fucking guy. This guy's dead, and he was so fucking revolting. He looked like... Did you ever watch Ren and Stimpy? Mm, a little bit. Oh, man. There was this old man character on Ren and Stimpy who had a big bulbous nose and glasses and tiny little teeth and a raspy voice. And that's what Bill looked like? And he would spit when he talked. Yes. He was like the personification of that guy. Yes. Wilbur Cobb. That's what he was like. 
he would sit. <laughs> I'm kind of liking was, what I'm seeing. It was fucking disgusting sitting across from Bill. We would go to like soup plantation and you know, he'd be eating a salad and he'd just have ranch dressing mixed with his saliva and you'd see it all over his teeth and you'd clear his throat in the middle of a bite and it just was fucking gross. But anyway, this motherfucker would send, send you, you <laughs> the longest email chain and it's all in like light blue so it's impossible to read and it was in comics. I feel bad for them because like for their entire life, right? It was pretty hard to get stuff printed. So they were like, okay, I can, you know, there was obviously tons of propaganda, but they were like, someone printed this out. I can put something behind this, yeah. right? And then the internet shows up and just everything is yeah. written, printed word. I can, and I so can they're put like, wacky colors on it? <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. And they got to tell everyone. Yeah. Well, I would get these email chains and I remember one of them being like, uh, you know, forward, forward, forward. Because the every time you oh, would yeah. forward it, it would add FWD to the subject line. So it would be like FWD, 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 forward, 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 forward. Nostradamus predicted September 11th, question mark. And then it was just someone somewhere made up, a, uh, a, like wrote it as if they were an ancient philosopher predicting vaguely some kind of disaster involving two buildings, two tall buildings. And it just... It, it, I remember his big one was like the world will collapse when there's one world economy or no one world currency or something like that. Oh, huh, interesting. I yeah, don't fucking it's know. It's all bullshit. This guy's not a real stupid. dude. But yeah, he's not a real dude. Nostra D's nuts. Nostra, fuck you. <laughs> Very good, Emil. <laughs> but, but but anyway, all I feel like a, that I feel like a, a drunk mom at at a, a sweet sixteen. Yeah, I and do I'm too. like, take me home. I just feel like I I feel like. I don't know. I, I feel elegant. And everyone's kind of like, I feel like we should take the champagne from her, but they know it would probably get worse if they tried to take this from yeah, her. Yeah, because you're kind of being pacified by it, but anything could set you off at any moment. Right. They're like, did you see the what she did with the balloon? I don't want to. Yeah. It's just all of a sudden the aggression in this woman. Uh, but DWAC, I remember it was once 175 bucks a share. And now it's down to yeah. 20. We I think we covered it when it first happened. Yeah, it shot up. And what happened? I think I, I tried to buy it. Oh yeah, and you you, talk, but you, you tried to buy it at like a hundred. No, I tried to buy it at like, like thirty. Oh yeah, and you were like, dude, it's hit the top. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Good memory, dude. Good memory. And I tried to tell you not to because I did not think that it would keep going, but it just kept going. And that was a, a confounding thing. But then I had the wherewithal to buy puts, and I made a little bit of money on it on the put side. But yeah, then I just stopped. Yeah, but yeah. Um, so who knows what the fuck's gonna happen with this thing? Um, if you're out there and you're holding shares in it, good luck to you, because uh, that's that's what you get in SPAC world. It's just a, it's an, it's a, it's the wild do you, west. Do you play them a lot? No, no, never. Because it's anymore. so. Um... Irrational. Yeah, and there's this. The structure of them is confusing because there's there's I I can't remember, but there's like certain people they immediately have the ability to ser- sell shares. They're like given shares just for making the deal happen. Like Chamath gets right. un- immediately just oh here's two hundred million dollars worth of the stock just for brokering the deal or something. This is really a simplistic way of looking at it, but that's essentially it. So that's why a lot of them immediately crash is because those people who are getting essentially is free money. Why are they going to sit around and and wait for the other guy to sell? I'm going to, you know, they're going to try to be first to fucking sell the thing. So that's what happened. But there are some, like SoFi was one that was a SPAC. And I think that that has kind of started to turn around. There was. Uh, I wonder how the student loan cancellation has affected them in any way. SoFi. Yeah, they. Well, oh, they probably bought private loans though, because they were buying up people's student loans yeah. and then getting them in. But that was probably private student loans. I have no idea. That's a good question. Yeah, I don't. I, again, private student loans aren't affected. You know, I bought a post SPAC stock recently. I bought Oscar. You know the healthcare oh, yeah, yeah. company. Because I'm looking at the. Do like, you have Oscar? Yeah, I do. I fucking, I hate it. You know why? <laughs> why? Because every time I go to log in, it's like wrong password. And and then I try to enter it and it just, it doesn't even let me try again. It just says you need to reset it. So I'm constantly 
fucking resetting my password on this shit. They were the OG um, millennial branding healthcare company. Yeah. You would see the cartoon characters on the subway advertising. Yeah, and you're yeah, like, yeah. New York. Yeah. But but how's the healthcare? It's fine. You know, it's just like anything else. I switched to Kaiser. I kind of like it. Really? Mm-hmm. Kaiser temporary? Nice. You should have said like temperante or something. Temperante. Fuck. Fuck! <laughs> Shit! It's the dress. It's choking off the blood supply. I think it's the champagne. My, it's the champagne. Yeah, damn, this shit's good though. Um, so uh, in other news, there was this big, there's this uh, once a month thing that came out. Uh, it's called the the I the the PMI data, which is the it stands for the Purchasing Managers Index. It's a barometer of the overall economy. Uh, it shows economic trends in manufacturing and service services sectors so there's a couple i didn't know any of this i i mean i vaguely knew but i i had to dive in and it's interesting so there are two there are two sources for the pmi you got the ism which is the institute of supply management and their their index of the pmi is based on surveys of more than 400 non-manufacturing firms as purchasing and supply executives so they basically go around and they ask 400 um executives hey what's going on how you feeling today how you feeling today and they're like oh, f- fine it feels or, bad feels bad i don't like it yeah. i uh i actually bought in may Wasn't i didn't good. go away I didn't go i should have went away um <laughs> my father was right i'm not cut out for it yeah so here this is me i'm i'm gonna be the ism well sir so Thank you for taking the time to do the survey. I'm from the um, the Institute of Supply Management, and you are a purchasing and supply executive. So that's right. Can you tell me just how you feeling? Uh, pretty bad. Pretty bad. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Got it. On a scale of one to ten, ten being really shitty and one being pretty good. Like how a, do you feel? Like a fifteen. I'm probably 15. gonna kill myself. Okay. Wow. So that's that's beyond the the uh, that's beyond our the scope of our. We're gonna so. we're gonna need a new scale for how bad I feel. Wow. Okay. That's interesting. You personally are going to bring down the entire index, which, mind you, has uh, far-reaching implications for the broader market. Oh sure. So, do you want to change your answer? No. No. You still feel pretty bad. If you could kill me, that'd be great. Gotcha. Okay. Well, sir, I'm not going to kill you, but uh, I can point you in the direction of someone who may be able to help. Sure. Thank you. Uh, anyway, thank you so much. And if I may suggest, have a donut or something. <laughs> they t- they always make me feel better. I won't. <laughs> so, and then, so the S and P Standard and Poor's does their own. So they're like they they Standard and Poor's does their own, and the ISM does theirs. Um, and here's the interesting thing. Give me the interesting thing. I've been so fucking waiting. For. ISM comes out at fifty six point nine. That's percent, not bad. Up. 0.2% compared to July. And guess what? That shows growth in the services sector. Oh, tell me what Standard & Poor's is doing. Continuing a 27-month expansion. It's bad. The ISM, it? the ISM, yeah, let's look at this. The, let's look at this before we get, the, the, U, the, the ISM services PMI came in at 56.9. Anything above 50 is growth. Anything below 50 is a contraction. Shit. Don't tell me the S&P is below. So, well, wait, let's uh, first look. Let's see. We got the services is growing. Business activity growing. I love new, that. New orders growing. Employment yes. growing. Supplier deliveries uh, s- s- slowing. What does that say? Yep, slowing. Slowing. Uh, inventories contracting. Well, this is good. We don't want inventories to keep growing. This is prices. Like when you find out Leah and Michelle can't read. Prices. <laughs> prices. That's are for all the younger listeners. Backing of orders growing. New export. Uh, just overall. Growing. Co- We're growing. doing pretty good. And the rate of change, faster. Fuck yeah. Services sector, growing. Fuck the rate yes. of change, faster. Hell good, yes. good, good, right? Right? Yes. You would yes. think so. Yes. But then the S&P comes along. The S&P's thing, they're like, oh, no, actually, Standard & Poor's, we do our own, you see. I'm Standard, this is my brother poor, and we're showing a- Also, con- he's Jewish, so he can do this. Yes, we're showing a contraction. We're actually, you know, ISM showed their PMI at 56.9%, but us at Standard & Poor's, we're showing down to 43.7%. That sucks. That sucks, yes. But, you know, it's just different. So, oh, he popped another balloon. Jesus H. Christ. 
<laughs> Jesus Christ. So, the, but here at Standard & Poor's, we're a little bit different. We don't do agriculture, forestry, fishing and hunting, mining, utilities and construction. Why don't no. they touch that? I don't know. But, and and I, I couldn't get you an answer. But so, like, the <laughs> ISM includes some big shit like utilities, and utilities has been on the up and up. So it's just kind of this big question, like, who's more accurate? Well, it depends on who you ask. The ISM tends to cover, uh, I believe, depending on who you ask, the divergence between these two. The Standard & Poor's showing a, co- a contraction. The ISM showing a uh, an expansion. Depending on who you ask, the divi- divergence is Jesus due to the— Christ. I know, it's no. the champagne. The ISM is mostly big firms— and the S and P Standard and Poor's includes more small and medium sized. Oh, businesses. a little pain on the small firms. Yeah, a little penis on the. Oh, a little pain on the small firms. Yeah, that's not what you were gonna say. I said it. I completed it for you. And then we had this guy who works for the S and P says the the ISM includes. Uh, yeah, he said that there's quite a big variance in sector coverage with the ISM notably including public admin, which usually holds up better in a downturn. Plus utilities, which is currently doing very well. So uh, who knows? This is Chris Williamson who said that. It works for Standard and Poor's. Shout out Chris Williamson. Shout out to St- Chris Williamson. He's from Standard and Poor's. I like doing that voice. It's so fun. It makes me uncomfortable. It Really? Why? It feels like you're doing a thing. <laughs> what do you mean? Standard and Poor's. Isn't it like a traditionally uh nebbish? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh god. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Woo! Hey guys, we want to take a quick break to thank a sponsor of today's episode, Harry's. Man, Ben. You know what's really getting crazy? What? My schedule. Oh, yeah. It's all over the place. Uh-huh. Wedding season, yeah. holidays, vacations, uh, podcast yeah. schedules. It seems like we're all cutting it close, moving from one thing to another. Uh-huh. And with their incredibly sharp razors and refills that arrive in the nick of time, Harry's is the official sponsor of Cutting It Close. (laughs) That's right, Emil. You know, I really love my Harry's razors and body wash. Their razors give me the highest quality shave, but for a low price. And they make it so easy to choose when I want refills. I know you do be loving the way I smell when I come in to record sometimes. (laughs) That's Harry's Body Wash. <laughs> right now, you can get Harry's started. Look at how smooth I look. You look smooth as hell, baby. Yeah, it's because I shaved with Harry's like three days smooth ago. As it's still eight. smooth that long ago. And also, I showered three days ago, too. And that's still Harry's. If I didn't have these heels on, I'd come over and feel that face. Oh, baby. Right now, you can get Harry's starter set for just $3. Huh, what? Plus, you'll get a free travel size body wash. This set includes a five blade razor, a weighted handle, uh, foaming shave gel, and a travel cover. A $16 value for just $3. Just visit harrys.com slash trail. Your time is precious. You don't need a five-step shaving routine. Wow. Harry's gives you everything you need for a great shave. Damn and right. nothing but that. Right. Don't waste any more time comparing brands. Nope. Harry's has the highest customer satisfaction in the shaving industry. And they're still offering a no-risk trial. You got nothing to risk. Don't like your shave? No worries. It's on them. That's right. No matter how busy things get, stay fresh with Harry's. Yeah. Get your Harry's starter set today, and you'll also get a free travel-sized body wash. Mm. Just go to harrys.com slash trill. That's harrys.com slash trill. <laughs> anyway, so, yeah, um, so the market was pretty torn yesterday, and or two days, three days ago for you guys? Yesterday for us, because today is Wednesday. We are recording this on a Wednesday this time. Because we got the big TMG live moment house thing yesterday for you Why guys. Why do you get into logistics? And tomorrow with, like, for us. You don't have to tell them. <laughs> it's my autism. Ben. My self-diagnosed. Not self-diagnosed. Someone on the internet diagnosed you. Yeah, that's right. Someone, someone sent a very, very sweet, earnest DM. Like, hey, I think I could help you out. Yeah, I think you've got it. Baby, I know I got it. All right? It's a superpower. <clears throat> so, ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So, there's a couple other things, though. Hit me. And it's all about just how 
you know, we're 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 talking about oh, are we entering a bear market? Yeah, tie me a shit. bow on this fucking. Thing. I'll tie you a bow. So make it I, pretty. I saw that the housing prices are starting to flatten and maybe drop. The median listing price dropped in August from like four hundred and sixty to four hundred and twenty k or something like that. I can't remember, but um, also. Here's an interesting th- uh, stat. I love the interesting stats. Housing is the least affordable. It's been, there's this thing called the NAR housing affordable housing affordability index. It measures whether a typical family earns enough to qualify for a 30 year fixed mortgage in a typical single family home without spending more than 25 percent of their income on payments. And look at this thing, dude. On the right, according to the NAR. Housing affordability. Wow, like, we have we are at all time lows, baby. I don't know if it's all. It must be. Well, it only time. goes to 1972. It might yeah. be when they first started tracking. But it, it is at negative. the The previous low was uh, just about 1980 when it was just below negative 20 percent, and then the Which other when uh, Paul Volcker probably started jacking up rates. Probably, yeah. And then the other um, major low was uh, just about 2014. And we have broken that record, and we are now at negative thirty percent. So, housing is just about as inaccessible as it gets since they've been measuring this shit. Why don't millennials want to buy homes? Uh, millennials are too busy buying avocado toast and sucking each other off to be able to. Hey, maybe if you skipped a latte, you lazy piece of shit, you'd yeah. have a home by now. Maybe if you use some instant coffee instead of a. Of its French press. Are you spending your entire salary on avocado toast, you <laughs> piece of shit? Yeah. Hey, dipshit, want to buy a house? Stop, stop subscribing to OnlyFans. Hey, quit blaming your parents for destroying the economy and stop buying. What do we buy? What do we fucking buy? I don't know. Man. What am I spending all my? I money mean, on? we. I, I personally spend all my money on food, and like vacation, when I can. And even then, it's I use the points to fly. But I then spend I, all my money going to weddings and watching my friends uh, tell each other they love each other. I hate weddings. You ever start calculating how much you've spent on weddings and you go, what am I doing? Yeah, my buddy Paul had a wedding up in um, like central northern California. And it cost me so much money and here's why. Yeah, what the fuck? I That's already easy. had a point on my license. Because like I made an, an illegal left turn or something, and I rented a car to drive up there for this wedding, and it was a v, it was a modern car, so I'm not used to it. So I'm not used to being able to just go 80 miles an hour without even thinking. Sure. Got a speeding ticket. Speeding ticket was like 400 bucks or whatever it was, and then that second point on my license from it made my car insurance go up for like. Two years. Oh, that's uh, so. Like overall, I calculated. I'm like, damn, this wedding cost me like three grand, <laughs> just from between renting the car, the hotel, driving up there. But the that's cab. on you. Yeah, of course it's on me. You can't blame your friend. No, I'm, mine. I'm blame my, my next three weddings. One's in Puerto Rico, Ireland, Rome. Hell yeah. Not hell yeah. You know how much money this is gonna fucking cost? A lot. <laughs> it's gonna suck. One of my favorite flights I've ever taken was. Flying to LAX from Dublin, Ireland. Why? Because- Can you get direct flights? I swear to God, yes. Okay. The plane never made a single turn. We took off and I was like, whoa, we're not making, oh, we must be pointed right in the direction. We never, and I paid attention the whole way. We did not make a single turn. For those who are at home, it's probably about at least 10 hours. This man is uh, staying alert. (laughs) That, I mean, I had a window seat, and usually, you know, you take off and then you make a turn to to go wherever. We did not. We just had this pleasant, just ascent. And you're you're looking over at the person in the in, in the middle seat. I think it was my and, brother. And you're or going. My girlfriend. Was that it? Did we turn? And they're like, "What? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Just go back to what you're doing." Anyway, so. Uh, uh, back to me talking way too much in this episode. I'm sure somebody's going to have something to say about it. You can't win. We. W- <laughs> Oops. <laughs> we got a bunch of guys going. Let's n- it, it'll it's talk a, about a little finance. Right. So I said, stack it, baby. Give them the give them the stuff they want. Yeah. And then you know what? There's going to be people complaining. Ben's talking too much. Whatever. Yeah. Give it to him, baby. That's right. I said let it rip. 
I did see, so I saw something. It's it's funny because there's all sorts of conflicting data out there. Depending on where you look and depending on what your perspective is, either things are getting better or things have yet to price in all the bad, right? And one cool thing that I saw is that shipping rates have dropped 60% in the last year. It's way cheaper to ship containers all over the world. The backlog, I don't know if you even saw this because it hardly made news. The backlog at the Port of Los Angeles right, it's almost clear. completely clear. So you would think what? What does that do for inflation? It would hopefully go down. I right? would I would think so. Shipping rates were a huge driver. Yeah. Uh and this backlog, people not being able to get the goods they want. Yeah. So we'll see. Yeah. But uh, it obviously it's not like it doesn't match exactly. Yeah. And you had a you had a combination. We had as as Walmart reported, as Target reported, the inventory glut. They had so much inventory anticipating this consumer demand that never quite fully um matched reduced that inventory glut did what it reduced demand for cargo shipping and not only that apparently the the fleet the net fleet of ships globally for shipping is expected to grow nine percent in 2023 and 24 so not only are you going to have more ships out there available to handle more shipping but you know there's less demand because of all that supply that's still out there and uh yeah i would hope would hope that that does something for inflation. Would love that. Would However, love if, uh, fucking Jerome Powell could take his foot off the goddamn. Jay Powell, but but um, apparently shipping rates aren't expected to drop to pre-COVID levels. So there's still that. They're still going to be elevated, but it's like, all right, give me a fucking break, man. Give him a fucking break. Give me a fucking break, dude. I got to pee so bad, but guess what? I'm gonna hold it. We love I'm gonna that. Hold it. All right, so let's jump into some. Uh, you want to yeah. do? You want to do some uh, crypto corner real quick? Beep boop beep boop. <laughs> What's going on? It's not good. Tell me. You tell me. Bitcoin taking a fucking hit. You think we had anything to do with it? What are they at now? They're probably at like 18. It was holding steady at at 20k for a while. People had said that. Oh, look at that. 18.8. Yeah. People were saying it looks like Bitcoin found its bottom. <laughs> <laughs> but that is not the case. Bitcoin found its bottom, huh? What what was it? On Grinder? <laughs> Bitcoin found its bottom? <laughs> what was it? On Grinder? <laughs> you think we had anything to do with it? Us? Yeah, definitely. You think our crypto episode did it? Yeah. Bitcoin was like a uh Bitcoin was like a uh, um was like me eating eating in and out burger on a Friday night. I I'm getting a burger, I'm getting animal fries, I'm getting a shake. Cause guess what? It took a huge dump. It did. It took a huge dump. Did you did you already offload all of yours? Or you no, <laughs> I, I I sold like 0.7 of my Bitcoin okay. to buy this Energy Web token that I am like, lost money on as well. No, I'm I'm like break You're even up on, on it. Uh-huh. Yeah, I was up on it pretty big because I bought it at like three dollars and ninety cents, and then it shot up to five, and I thought, hey, I'm just gonna hold on to this thing. But this last Monday, September, whatever the fuck it was, fifth. September 5th, I think, it dropped more than um, $600, or no, Tuesday, sorry, it dropped yesterday for us, it just in the middle of the day, it just fucking tanked, it was like a liquidation event, I don't know if someone out there had to, some big whale, yeah, some big whale had, uh, some sperm whale out there had to um, splooge out there and get it all out, that's gross. I hope that everyone who's not a whale gets out and lets all these people all the whales suffer. Yeah. Maybe it was one of the Winklevosses who was like, I've got to buy. Dude, we never talked about it because other shit came up. But remember, I was like, what are the Winklevosses up to anyway? And then I looked it up after the show. Yeah. They started a fucking cover band. <laughs> it's insane. Dorks, man. Have you watched any of it? No. They're just like, I mean, they're not horrible. Sure. It's very mediocre. But they play kind of big venues because they have a following. Of course. Like they played the Stone Pony in New Jersey, which is kind of a famous... Or maybe it was the Wonder Bar. Either how way, many, how in many, Asbury what's Park. the capacity? Mm, like, f- I, like under a thousand. It's still pretty sizable. It might be like five hundred. Who do they play instruments or do they sing? Yeah, one of them sings and the other one plays guitar. That's kind look of, at this. Hey, good for them. It's important to have passions. Thanks for a great one last night in San Diego. See you tonight. El- tonight at Teragram? No, that was ten weeks oh, ago, dude. Man, look at them. God, they look like. Can we play dorks. it? Can we hear the audio? I don't think we can. Oh, gotcha. Uh, 
Gotcha, gotcha. Well, let's gotcha. let's do it. Let's do it. Let's try to figure it out. Yeah, yeah, that's my brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, waiting. he's not singing yet. He's got on big boots and he's with got the a little heel chain. He's got the chain. Yeah, rocking out. Yeah, wait, come on, come so on. They saw they saw Bitcoin taking a spill, and they were like, you know what? We need to have a backup plan here. What do you say we become the most rockinous cover band <sighs> to distract? This yeah. might be why Bitcoin is shit in the bed. Yeah. These are the guys who are back. Well, yet? did you see Michael Saylor's getting sued? No. You didn't see that? And ben, I think I've been in the woods for like five days. Michael Saylor is getting sued, I think, by Washington DC. Uh because the city? Yeah, like the district attorney or whatever, Washington DC, I think, is suing him because to to quote them, he's been living in DC and hasn't paid taxes in like I thought over he was a decade. In like Florida. I think he was based out of DC or something. Let's see. DC, yeah. MicroStrategy co founder Michael Saylor faces charges of evading United States income taxes he allegedly incurred while living in Washington, DC. Yeah. It's over twenty five million dollars in DC income tax. Okay, so that's that's nothing for him. But uh Sang Lucci, who we're trying to get on the show, who you guys would love. I, I've been following this guy Sang Lucci for years. Um, he's an options trader. He has been, um, he's kind of had a similar arc as mine in the sense that he had huge success and huge failure, but on a bigger scale. Um, I saw that he was short 40 Bitcoin. (laughs) I don't know how the fuck you short Bitcoin. That's a question that I'd like to ask him. And, uh, but yeah, um, I personally have bids in cause I have some cash still in my, in my, um, trading account. I'm not going to say where. Because I don't want people to try to... F- Whoever the fuck keeps trying to hack my Venmo account, stop. It's annoying. I keep getting emails every day. It's like a new form of, of sliding into my DMs. Is some dork out there who's like, oh, I'm going to try to hack Bed's Venmo. I keep getting like new sign-in attempt detected. Like, I keep getting people sending me money. Lucky. <laughs> God damn. Anyway, I have a bid at 18,000 and then another one at like uh 172 or something like that. So Oh, and then uh, uh should we talk you know, we got a minute. We could here. do real quick. We could do uh how, how about we do Pinterest always Oh, wait. Fuck. We had two things we should t- We can save the Pinterest thing. How about the Bed Bath and Beyond? Yeah, we got to go. That one's crazy. The Bed Bath and Beyond CFO. So the CFO fucking leapt to his death in New York. Yeah. Tragic. It's insane. Yeah. And, I mean, headlines are coming out. People are trying to, I don't know if they're trying to connect it to things, but there's a big lawsuit happening. I think it's, uh, he was named, and I think Ryan Cohen, for uh, pump and dump schemes. And then the other one I keep seeing was that it's right before they're about to close a bunch of stores and lay off a bunch of workers. And I'm like, I I can't imagine this. I mean, this is happening everywhere. Fucking Snap laid off 20% of its um, yeah. employees. It's, you know, there's layoffs. Everyone's slowing. Imp- I can't imagine this guy was like, oh, no, economic downturn. I'm going to jump out of my building. Right. I'm so curious what's going on. Yeah. I mean, we may never know unless he left a note or something. But but who does know? Who Who, who knows? knows? The apes. The apes know. The apes always know. The apes are so fucking smart. And I, I if you don't... um follow the and the, when we say the apes we mean the uh the amc apes the amc the g the gamestop apes the people who know that the moas is coming aka the people who bought into gamestop and amc at the top right or on the way down and then just kept losing but there is a subreddit called gme underscore meltdown <laughs> it's so great all it is, it's probably former apes who have gotten wise to the game, and it's also just people like us who who love to follow along with their delirium. It's a little bit of uh, Schadenfreude. 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 It's um so so they they found this this post from uh Wall Street Bets, and the the title of the post is "Be Prepared for the Ultimate, Ultimate FUD. FUD." FUD is fear, uncertainty, uncertainty and doubt. doubt. And this 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 delusional ape, in in the wake of the Bed Bath and Beyond CFO killing himself, of course this is natural. Like this is to them, it's a conspiracy. It's always a conspiracy. Um, 
as the main. I think they're just seeing what's really going on. Oh yeah, you can't see it. Oh yeah, maybe we just don't know. But as the mainstream media stories are released, we can see the obvious play. They're gonna try and take out Ryan Cohen with the dirtiest of smear campaigns. This is their game. He's about to be implicated in the death of Bed Bath and Beyond CFO by the scum media. They may even get him indicted and sidelined. This is their grand plan. Take Ryan Cohen out of the game by destroying his reputation and hope that the apes will all sell and run away. (laughs) I don't don't think think so. so. The only thing that'll blow the lid off of this now is the absolute inevitability of the mother of all short squeezes, the Moass. Our enemies are terrified. Your resolve is absolutely critical now. I will now buy GameStop continuously and dollar cost average, whatever the fuck, until I'm either broke or a billionaire. Probably broke. Probably broke. Probably broke. <laughs> I bet it's going to be broke. Probably broke. <laughs> broke. To me, it's not even about the money anymore. It's about exposing the foul underbelly of the U.S. stock market and its media scum shills, then laying a biblical level of waste to all of them. That's what I can't take. The fucking, like, the, 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 them propping themselves as, <laughs> as, as activists. Yeah. It's about exposing the foul underbelly of the U.S. stock market. No, it's not. It's Go about absolutely. you fantasizing about becoming <laughs> right. a fucking You guys all thought you were going to be rich. You put everything you had into it, and now you're fucking so in over your head. It has to come true. Yeah. It's like, it. it that's exactly right. It it's, has to come It has to come true or they're dead. Yeah. It's literally, those are the two options. He's either going to go broke or become a, a billionaire. It bums me out so much. It's like, every. It's it is confirmation bias, like, taken to the, to the, to the furthest extreme. Yeah. It's insane. It's absolutely, it's, it's tragic, man. Like, because then people read that and they, they, I remember when I was in penny stock world and the stock that I was in was down 90%. All it took was one post being like, yeah, but they're also doing this and this and this. And I would think, yeah, yes. Oh yeah. You read <laughs> the shit. Sure thing. <laughs> and it's dude, if you, if all of your wealth is tied up in this shit, you read this and you're like, oh fuck. Yes. It must be true. Yeah. It's all going to come out. Yeah. They're going to get exposed. They're so fucked. Yeah. Also. If they're short the stock and the stock is down like 60%, guess what? They've already made a fuck ton of money shorting the stock. They're not sitting there going, oh, fuck, oh, shit, we're still short, and the stock isn't dropping more. It's already dropped so much. Yeah. They've already made so much money. These poor people, man. We're getting a... Uh... We're getting told to shut the fuck up. Yeah. Producer Zach is writing, shut the fuck up now. Shut the absolute ultimate fuck up. So I guess we should shut up. We'll see you guys in After Hours. Thank you guys for tuning in to 50 episodes. Yeah. Uh, Subscribe for After Hours if you want to see us um, talk about some more shit. Genuinely. Thank you so much. Thank you. It has been almost a year, I think, um, since we've been doing this. And uh, it feels like yesterday, and it's really, really fun and cool. I think I'm going to put my underwear on for the next one, because I've got penis and balls right on leather. And that's exactly why I love doing this. Can you believe it? Everybody uh, out there who leaves nice comments, and everybody who doesn't, and those who don't comment, the silent listener, the silent viewer. Those are my favorite. The guy who's just tuning in. He yeah, just likes just to enjoy in. it. He's just doing it. He doesn't say anything. But remember to comment because it does help. You, the, gotta, <laughs> you, got, you, you gotta, do you have gotta, to comment. I was joking. I don't like those guys. The silent guys? Yeah, fuck you. Uh, no, I, hey, silent guy. <laughs> hey, speak up. Speak up, up you bitch. You like the show. Why don't you say something? Yeah, tell a friend. <laughs> You're tuning in every week. Say tell something. Christ on the cross. Ridiculous. It anyway, helps. there's Ryan. We love Ryan. He's looking at us. He's laughing because we're in a dress. It's not that crazy to be in a dress. All right, we got to go. We got to go. We got to go. They, they sent in the big guns. Ryan's here. He's going to okay. kill us. We're going to go piss. I'm going to try not to do Aju style with the dress in the toilet, dip it in the toilet, and then <laughs> slurp out the pee out of the All dress. All right, see you in after hour. All right. Bye. Love you. This week on After Hours. The pee hole. It's all piss. All right, so we solved cancer. Next heavy topic for us to figure out. Jack. Jack Nicholson. It was fuck. It was an 80s video. Oh. Wow. (laughs) What was that?
Sign up on tmgstudios.tv to watch the full bonus episode.